by definition. Of course. Now our goodness cannot benefit God, not only because of who he is, but, and this is the flip side of it, because of what we are. How could I <coughs> possibly enrich God when I'm a creature of the dust, frail, weak, insignificant? I don't do much enriching of other people, never mind God. And then, which makes the matter ten times worse, at least, I'm sinful. Everything that I do is terribly stained and defiled with sin. And so Paul laments, O oh, wretched man that I am. And then, whatever physical or spiritual strength that I have, and it doesn't seem to be much, even that comes entirely from God. So my goodness, whatever grace of the Spirit is in my heart, or whatever good works I do, is a gift of God in Jesus Christ to me, in regeneration and sanctification. So everything comes from God. And how could I possibly think that anything that I do could ever enrich or add to his blessedness? In fact, and this is getting near to the root of the matter, I'm always, only, ever a debtor, a debtor to God, in all things and in all ways. And David knew that. That's why he says in the opening words of this psalm, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. That is, Lord, watch over me. Watch over me in body and soul. Watch over me day and night, now and forever. Watch over me, Lord, because I cannot protect or preserve myself, because my enemies are great, and I'm very weak. For in thee do I put my trust. I put no one else that I could possibly look to or turn to. I'm totally dependent upon thee. Watch over me, Lord. I trust in thee. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my sovereign master. My good doesn't extend, can't reach, can't ever benefit you. And that is to say, all the benefit, all of it, is entirely one way. Because we are always the beneficiaries of God's goodness. God never is and cannot be the beneficiary of of our goodness. It is all one way. It all comes from God to us and nothing goes from us to God. David is here stating in slightly different terms perhaps than we're used to but he is here stating the truth of grace. Sovereign grace. God does good to us. God's goodness definitely reaches, extends to us First of all, the eternal election. That's God's grace. His attitude of favour to us in Jesus Christ. Reaching us, uniting us with Christ and viewing us with favour. God benefits us and does good to us in the cross of Jesus Christ. God says, I want to take all your sins and I'll put them on him so that he suffers for your transgressions. And in your union with him on the cross, you are going to die to sin. And his death will purchase for you <coughs> everlasting life. And then Jehovah implants in us the seed of regeneration, enriching us. Jehovah daily loads us with benefits. <coughs> Psalm 103 puts it. Jehovah says about those who are unclean, who are filthy in our blood, that I love you, and I wash you, and I'm going to make you perfect so that you are part of the bride of Jesus Christ. I call you my sons. And it's all one way. It's all coming from heaven to us on earth. And then God says, I've done all this to you, 
and you don't even know how much I've done for you, and you couldn't grasp it even if I were to tell you, and I have told you in the Bible, and you still only appreciate just a tiny little sliver of it. And even then, eternity itself isn't long enough, so to speak, for me to show you all the kindness that I have towards you in Jesus Christ. That's Ephesians 2. But I will, I'll do that. And I'll open your heart, and I'll open the eyes of your understanding so that you grasp more and more all the benefits that I give to you when you are completely worthless and a debtor of yourself. O oh, my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord, my goodness extendeth not to thee, but thankfully your goodness extends to me. That's the confession of the Christian church and of every believer. I should perhaps add this though as a word of clarification that in our relationship with God the benefiting is all one way Jehovah enriches us always we never add anything to his blessedness but this doesn't mean that covenant fellowship with God is one way it's two way God comes to us in Jesus Christ by the word and spirit. He speaks to us. He communes with us. He comes down. We then respond to him with gratitude and prayer. That's a two-way thing. A two-way communion. He approaches us in Christ and then we draw near in faith. And that is fellowship. Two way. But then we need to say something about this two way thing. Even with that, we only love him because he first loved us. We only find it in us to love him because his love for us creates our love for him. In effect, it's his love returning to him in the Holy Spirit. We can only pray, we can only give thanks because his grace changed our hearts. So it's two ways. But it's always initiated by God who brings the whole cycle fully back to himself through us. Covenant fellowship is two-way. It has to be for it to be fellowship. But the benefiting is only one way. God enriches us and even with the riches of his grace which he gives us, we can never add anything to his blessedness that's david's confession oh my soul thou hast said unto the lord because you know it very well soul thou art my lord my sovereign master my goodness does not extend to thee but thy goodness most definitely extends to me and this means that there can never be any merit in our relationship with God. We can never earn anything with God. And any rules which we make up, or petty legalisms, don't put God in our debt. That means, too, that we can never fulfill any conditions in order to obtain anything from God. We don't give our offerings in the church, for instance, thinking... Well then, now God is obliged to me, and I have him where I want him in my debt, and therefore he must do such and such for me, in a sort of a quid pro quo relationship. We don't fast with that intention either. I have suffered, therefore God will make me blessed. Never debtor, never obliged to us. Luke 17 verse 10 puts it, when we have done all that God commands of us, we are unprofitable servants. If we do all of it, which we can never do, still unprofitable because we only ever do what he commanded us to do. And then when we do what he commands us to do, imperfectly, partially, then we say, well, what? grace did we have that we didn't receive in the first place 